Hello, thank you for stopping by. Bamboo Betty here with Begonia Coconut. Last Sunday was my birthday, so I thought I'd nip out on Saturday to pick up a couple of wool brackets from B&Q and um, finish a job that I was planning to do in the yard on about three months ago. Of course I didn't get the wall brackets, <laughs> so instead I thought I'd give you a 10 plant haul and show you what I picked up. Got them all back for inspection. think oh no 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 <laughs> no I've got a lot of pinks and blues and um, soft purples in the garden, so I um, I just wanted to pop out and get something yellow. I needed something very acidic to um, contrast with all the, the soft palette colours. And I nipped into Dobby's and found the perfect thing. Hello. It was exactly what I was looking for, and it is a Coreopsis Sun Kiss. Sunkiss is kind of rubbing it in a little bit, so there's a chance to be a fine thing. I've nipped out here in a slight break in the clouds. Um, but also... Ta-da! Happy birthday to me. Thank you, Dobbies. Two ninety nine. Um, it's got lots of buds, and unfortunately, I did that to it on the way home. But um, it doesn't matter. I'll just cut that off. And um, It's a perennial, so it'll just get bigger every year put it into something bigger. That's that one, sun kiss. Then of course came the fatal just nip into B&Q for two little tiny wall brackets fiasco. That turned into three hour paradise getting completely lost, absorbed in all the plants and um, I went on a bit of, a bit of a fuchsia frenzy. Um, however initially I just thought maybe I'll need one more yellow plant and because I'd taken the bud layer out and I owed the butterflies um, another lunch and dinner and breakfast I found this by itself it was the only one left and it's a potentella gold finger and it's absolutely beautiful it's so delicate fine leaves and dainty flowers and I've already found a beautiful little nook for that Gorgeous. I couldn't stop. <laughs> you know, when you get on a roll, and it had been so long, it had been such a, a, a terribly depressing, obviously global period. Um, we're still in lockdown here in England, and being cute, they just seem to have had a, a, a little delivery, because there'd been quite a sparse selection of plants really for the whole time and um, I just I just completely fell in love with it all and I got lost in the moment and this is a Rudbeckia also called coneflower and similarly to the potentilla is absolutely delicious to the butterflies so hopefully um, my red admirals will come back I haven't seen them for a while actually I haven't seen them since I took the buddleia out so Please come back, I'm sorry. Focus. 
real. That is, Ruth back here, little gold star. I mentioned in an earlier video that I'd had a thing for years against fuchsia and I never really thought why, I just thought they were a bit fake, a bit artificial and um, obviously I've been converted by a friend but um, I, I just I researched very briefly last night and I found out that they actually symbolise elegance, good taste, confiding love and amiability. So. Perhaps that's why I hated them. <laughs> anyway, I can't resist anything that needs rescuing, including houses, cats, cars. I've drawn the line at people now, thank God. We're all happier about that. Um, but in the clearance section, I found two things. I found a GM, which I'll show you in a second, but also this tiny, tragic little fuchsia called Shania. And obviously half price, so what's that, £1.60, £1.70? But it's in a pretty bad state actually. I would not normally buy anything that needed rescuing. It's in this bad a condition. If you see here, I think it's probably got rust. Rot. Yes, darling, hello. Hello, here. What do you think? Can we save it? Um, but why I bought it is because it's... Um, it's the colouring. It's got very pale green sepals. There's a little skirt. And a pale lilac petal single flower. <laughs> what do you think? Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, your nose. And uh, I'm going to cut it back very hard. I'm going to cut all the, the diseased leaf leaves off. And hope for the best. I'll let you know how we get on. I also forgot to say its nickname is Lady's Eardrops. Yeah, I can see why. Wallop, look at that. Now, <laughs> what was I saying about vulgar? That's so Vegas. Now, this one is called Dollar Princess. Dollar Princess and I was all gung-ho and ready to put it in the basket until I saw the name and I thought mm, it really put me off it just sort of made me think of the Trumps and I just hummed and a hard and I had it in my hand I didn't know trolley I took it out I put it back I swapped them about I thought is there another one that looks the same and as I was standing there uh, some bees started to hover about and they started to look a bit interested and had a little bit of a nibble so I thought right okay get over yourself we can rename it we'll have to think of a new name for it in the yarden uh, but it just looks fantastic I mean those colours are stupendous that's literally fuchsia as in fuchsia and the buds are incredible um, The name isn't screaming out at me at the moment. <laughs> Where did you come from? <laughs> um, but if you've got any suggestions, please put them in the comments. This is the one what got me. I swooned. I couldn't take my eyes off it. And since I've had it home, don't eat it. She she's nibbling them a little, but I always check before I buy anything in the garden centre whether it's toxic for cats. And uh, there is no known issue. There are no known issues. There's no toxicity. There's no toxicity registered with fuchsias and cats. So she's quite safe. Although I stop her when I see her nibbling. Mm. Frisky, what can you see? Mm. Is it the scent of begonia we got? 
we're going to do that one last. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> it's like double beauty. My favourite creature with my favourite fuchsia. And um, yeah, the, the, the way that the flowers hang like pendulous ballerinas completely got me. It got me in the heart. Uh, and this one is called Beacon. And as I was standing holding it in B&Q, a huge big fat bumblebee shot up the flowers and just had a big old party in there. So um, I thought, get in the trolley. The next one I found was Alice Hoffman. Now, the only person that I can think it this is named after is the author Alice Hoffman who wrote Practical Magic and uh, she's always got a welcome place in my yard and I've even got a bath if um, if anything any evidence needs burying <laughs> my lips are sealed and uh, the bees are mad for it they're all over it already and it's a beautiful light, what would you call that, light, lipstick pink, maybe, yeah, lipstick pink, with um, creamy white petals and lipstick pink stamens, gorgeous, and the last fuchsia I bought on Saturday is this, Delta's Sarah. Apparently it's one of the most popular in the country and it's probably the, in the worst condition of all of them. They're all a bit leggy and a bit soft but I'm going to do something radical in a minute about that. Um, but obviously it's blue with white sepals. Um, it's actually mixed there but I think when it's established and it's comfortable and it's happy uh, it will be blue and white. Um, Apparently you can uh, crystallise the flowers and eat them in salad. The friend who converted me to fuchsias, she told me that uh, you can actually eat the pods, but um, I've only just managed to get round to actually having them in my life, so I'm definitely not ready to eat them. <laughs> but um, you never know. Come the cold apocalyptic winter of Brexit, <laughs> I might start you in the chair. <laughs> Here we are. Finally, in the birthday hall, is this absolutely exquisite fragranced begonia. Obviously, I'm biased about begonias, but I think they're the most heavenly plants. And this one is scented. I was thought so thrilled to find it just on the way out of B&Q. It was the very last shelf by the doors. And um, here we are. This one is begonia fragrant falls lemon. I did find one in a specialist garden centre a couple of years ago that was, um, I think it was called Spiced spice Tea or something like that. I think everything's called Spiced Tea. And it was exquisite, it was divine. Um, they didn't, I've never seen one since and unfortunately I, I lost that in the winter. I should have protected it. But I'm thrilled to find this. There were only two there. Uh, so I took, I took one and left one for the next lady or gentleman or child or person. And uh, I wish you could smell it. Absolutely gorgeous. So here's the gang of fuchsias. There's four here. And they were a pretty fair price for the condition. They're not in the strongest, healthiest state. So what I'm going to do is I am going to hack them back to within an inch of my life and their life. And um, also, I think that uh, they're going to be pretty easy to take cuttings from. So there's going to be more fuchsia in this yard than, uh, than in Kew Gardens. <laughs> uh, so um, if anybody wants a fuchsia, come this way. <laughs> I didn't really mean that. Don't come this way. Please don't come this way. You can get them on B&Q for three for 15 quid. <laughs> Get your own fuchsias. So there we are. That's the end of the haul. 
It's my birthday plants this year, and uh, if you like to listen to me rambling about plants, please subscribe, please send me a message, say hello, and uh, please come again next time. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Anyway, I forgot to mention plant number 10 with the GM and it's just in there. I've just put it around the back of the plum tree, of the uh, pear tree. For now, I might get a second flowering from that, but um, if not, it'll be abundant next year. And it's absolutely beautiful. That's another yellow one. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Why though? I don't know.